So it's a big project. It has a lots of upside in terms of exploration. Um, only about, it's about 16 kilometers of mineralization we have identified on surface, and only about 40% of that is drilled. Uh, we have quite a few new targets we've developed from a new round of geophysics done in 17 and 18, and we're doing another round now. Well, hello to viewers and welcome to Assay TV. I'm very pleased to host Harry Barr, the CEO and founder of New Age Metals. And New Age Metals is a company developing the River Valley Palladium project and multiple lithium projects that we're going to be getting an update on today. So, Harry, a pleasure to be talking with you. Thanks for having us on, Adam. Great. Um, could you just start us off by giving us a brief overview of the company just to set the scene? Well, we're a green metals company. Uh, I think what makes us different is we, we have both uh, platinum group metals and, and lithium, uh, lithium division. Um, we are developing one of the largest undeveloped uh, primary palladium projects in North America. And um, we're in the Sudbury district, so we're 100 kilometers from one of the biggest metallurgical centers in Canada and, and in North America. So it's a great place for a junior company to be doing work. Um, our other projects are in Manitoba, another good province, and we do have um, a development stage ready to drill uh, projects as PGMs and base metals up in Alaska. Excellent. Um, this is a really opportune time to be you know, positioned in these particular metals. Um, there's a global challenge of decarbonization going on, as you'll know, and a lot of incentive towards bringing supply online. Uh, for the metals that, that are going to enable uh, cleaner fuels, cleaner transportation, cleaner society. So the company's well positioned in that respect. Yes, um, we're quite happy to have the kind of diversity that we do. Um, again, to be in North America with a big uh, PGM uh, palladium project is quite unique. And uh, I think you'll see Canada and the U.S. Uh, start to develop a, a lot more of the uh, lithium projects that are out there too. So there's a big push towards lithium and we're glad we're involved in both spaces. Excellent. Okay, so turning to your projects, um, let's talk about the River Valley Palladium project in Sudbury, is it? Um, you mentioned some of the qualities of the location, um, but just take us through um, an update of, of what you're doing there. Yeah, again, being that close to Sudbury has a, a lot of advantages um, for a junior mining company, if you want an engineering company, a drilling company, a metallurgical company, uh, geological services, uh, virtually everything you need for the mining industry is less than 100 kilometers from our project. It's road accessible, we've got power, um, and, and an area that understands mining for over 120 years, I think that's important. Uh, we have deals with our local indigenous groups, uh, who again, most of their ancestors have probably worked in the mines in Sudbury over the years. Um, over and above that, we, it's a multi-million ounce project. We've got just about three million ounces in the top two categories and then uh, over a million ounces in the um, inferred category or indicative. Yeah. So, um, so it's a big project. It has a lots of upside in terms of exploration. Um, only about, it's about 16 kilometers of mineralization we have identified on surface and only about 40% of that is drilled. Uh, we have quite a few new targets we've developed from a new round of geophysics done in 17 and 18, and we're doing another round now. So it's not uh, maxed out in terms of ounces. I think we're just getting going on the project. Um, we have done a PEA in 219, the first economic study that was positive, and now we've signed up with four engineering companies and a, a, a metallurgical group uh, to basically help us do the first uh, pre-feasibility study. And that's uh, in progress. We've started in April. We had our second meeting with all the companies that were helping us develop this um, project and, and, uh, and come up with the pre-feasibility study yesterday. So we're moving along as best we can. Um, and uh, there'll be more drilling uh, as, as the year goes on and some of the exploration targets we have, uh, but the biggest focus will be on the pre-feasibility study for this project this year. And that should be done sometime in the second quarter of next year. Excellent, lots going on. Um, within the um, 
the metallurgy that you're you're finding? Uh, what's the sort of split among the PGMs? And, and you, it's a good question. Up? It's it's primarily a, a palladium project. Um, about sixty four percent primarily is palladium. Platinum is the second most important metal. We have gold. We have um, copper. Uh, probably the third most important metal. Um, we do have some uh, nickel and some cobalt, and the project also has rhodium, and uh, we are basically developing. We didn't do enough assaying in the early days to include rhodium as a payable metal, so there's a program on now. In fact, we've just collected a second batch of assays where we're going back to our existing core. We have all our core from the 700 and some holes that have been drilled in the project. And we're going back and basically reassaying some of this core to try and get uh, rhodium as a payable metal. There'll probably be at least two to three other batches of 250 to 300 uh, assays that we need to do over the year. And uh, our goal is to try and include ro rhodium as a payable metal and hopefully uh, to get it at least to 5% of the payable metals in the project. Excellent. So there's some interesting upside of some of the payable metals you've got in there. Um, just with regards to the drilling, so you, you're fully financed for this next period of, um, of drilling that's going on? Yes, we have um, the uh, pre-feasibility study is just going to be under 3 million Canadian. Um, we have about 8.5 million in the Treasury. We have another $2.1 million kind of in escrow waiting for a shareholder vote to bring uh, Eric Sprott, who's a very well-known international uh, financier, um, to have the ability for him to go over 20%. He's at 19.9 right now. So yeah. that'll bring another 2.1 million into the treasury of the company. So we're well-financed, uh, certainly for the next 18 months, and uh, we have enough money to do the drilling we need to do too. Excellent. It's very busy on the Sudbury project. Okay, um, could you take us to the lithium division projects in Manitoba? And I understand you have a number of claims there. And um, perhaps we could start with perhaps the, the, the geology of this uh, Winnie Pig Cat Lake uh, permatite field, why it's so, so, uh, so promising. Well, uh, we had the good fortune to uh, hire a, a consultant to, who has worked in that district for many years. There's a mine that goes back to 1969 there called the Tanko Mine, and it's recently been bought, I think it'll be two years this summer, uh, from a Chinese group called Sinomine. And it's one of the biggest pegmatites in Canada, and it had primarily produced tantalum and cesium. It's producing cesium now, and they're going to bring in a, a tantalum circuit. But there's always been a great deal of lithium there, and that'll be the third thing as, as we read uh, about what Sinomine is trying to do is that they're looking at, at possibly bringing in a lithium circuit too. So with a lot of the claims that that company had over the years kind of being dropped and, and the knowledge of, uh, of the gentleman that we hired to, to consult uh, with, we picked up seven different projects, many of them surrounding the Tanko mine uh, and some of them to the north uh, of the project. Uh, to give you an idea, one of the projects had been drilled in the 1940s and it had a non a historic resource, non-43101 resource of just under 600,000 tons at about 1.4%, 1.4%. And um, so we'll be drilling that. Uh, we have uh, another project that's got about 40 known pegmatites on surface that we've got up to 4% or better uh, in terms of surface samples of, of lithium. Uh, and uh, that's just recently received a drill uh, permit. So that'll be the second place we'd like to drill. And then we're working on a third area right now. Over and above that, we have um, been doing some geophysics on the property, some drone geophysics. And uh, we're basically, we did three projects to begin with, and we're back out there right now doing two more. And following up on that, we'll be doing some ground proofing and some mapping and service sampling from those. And again, trying to get them to the drill stage. Um, we are aggressively looking for a partner on this one. We are fully funded this year for uh, between five hundred and seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So we're able to go out and keep things going and uh, move the project forward. But we're also looking to uh, to find a partner and help us develop this over over time. Yep, excellent. And um, let's look at the other assets that you have in Alaska. Of course, uh, PGM's projects there. 
what's the update um, on, uh, on uh, discoveries then? Yeah, the project we have in Alaska is road accessible. Uh, it's about three kilometers off a paved highway to get to our site. We've got 10,000 acres of state uh, claims. And um, it's a project we've had in the past. In, in, in the mid-2000s, we brought in Stillwater and, and just about $500,000 was spent on the project. Unfortunately, their management team was taken over and the board of directors and, and they changed paths and we got the project back. It's never been drilled, but we've done a lot of surface sampling and we've got uh, areas, we've got an area blocked out on surface about 2000 meters. It's got a lot of good PGMs on surface numbers like 2.2, uh, 2.4 grams of both palladium and platinum and up to a percentage of nickel and well over half a percentage of copper. Um, so this year, our goal with that project is to find a partner too, but with the COVID situation in Alaska, uh, both last year and this year hasn't been very good for trying to get people in to visit. So we've got a $100,000 U.S. program outlined where we're going to go back into the areas of known mineralization. And we've got two other areas that we know there's mineralization, but we haven't done any surface sampling that we hope to uh, go back into this summer. And we're just arranging that program with it. Um, our geological consultants in Alaska. So there will be news coming out of Genesis. Over time, we would like to bring in a partner and help us develop that project too. Excellent. There's certainly lots going on um, on all sides to, for investors to be paying attention to. Um, I'm just thinking, you know, you've got Eric Sprott on the register. You've got these really key transition metals in great jurisdictions, very mining friendly, and you're well financed for the drill programs. You know, is the, is the share price slightly undervalued in that respect um, in terms of investors looking at the proposition here? Well, I, I think I think it definitely is. I think every CEO probably thinks their company's undervalued, but uh, you know we're only trading at about 16 cents Canadian with a couple hundred million shares out. So our market cap's just over $30 million. Uh, we literally have, in terms of metal in the ground, billions of dollars of metal in, on, on a River Valley project at least. And I think the other projects give us extra upside. And so, yes, I think we're undervalued. We're cashed up, uh, ready to go. Um, that's part of the reason we've, we've joined up with your group is to get the news out to other companies. We've recently hired a, a pretty well-known uh, IR company here in Canada, and we're doing two meetings a month on average uh, with about 60 stockbrokers and investors. Uh, and we have several other things we've just recently signed up to to try and get the, the news out about who we are and, and uh, what we're doing and, and why we think we are undervalued. But um, no, I, I think it's a, it would be an excellent time if you're interested in this industry to, to look at purchasing our stock because it's, uh, it's certainly a buy. Yeah, indeed. And, and just on the broader, you know, operational side of things throughout the pandemic, you mentioned Alaska's had some challenges there with getting people up there, but it seems like you've remained pretty active despite some of the, um, uh, the lack of travel or the operational issues. In fairness to the, uh, I think the Canadian government and the provincial governments, they've all allowed uh, exploration and development to, to be a priority. Uh, obviously we have to take, uh, um, uh, you know, live by the, the COVID rules, uh, as they say, but uh, no, they, they, they certainly haven't stopped us uh, and, and we've been moving ahead as best we can. And, uh, Ontario, <clears throat> excuse me, right now where I am is just coming under off the third lockdown uh, actually this Friday. So it seems like our numbers are coming down and the needles are getting in the arms of uh, a lot of people now. And, and I think we're on our way to, you know, to uh, getting hopefully this COVID thing behind us in the next few months. Yep. Excellent. Well, that's great to have uh, the snapshot of where things are at right now, Harry, and uh, some of these key milestones with the pre-feasibility progress and the drilling campaigns for your discoveries uh, that are coming up this summer. Um, so we look forward to catching up with you again for an update on SATV further down the line. Thanks for having us today. Thanks, Harry.